welcome back to my channel. I'm Kristen. You're watching Kristen Cooks. If you're new here, hi, I'm Kristen. I do cooking videos on my channel and mostly just cooking videos. But anyway, it's Easter time yet again. And I have a couple of Easter sides that I wanted to make for you today and one little sweet treat that's Easter themed, of course. So let's get going. Okay, to start off this recipe, I'm going to boil one box of macaroni and for six minutes, and that's it. We're just going to parboil the macaroni just to kind of get the cooking going and to make sure it's done at the end of the cook. So in my crock pot here, I'm going to spray very generously with nonstick spray. And going back to the pasta now, it is done at six minutes. It's not done, done, but... It's where we need it to be, so I'm just going to drain it and then cool it down really quick with some cold water to stop the cooking. We don't want the pasta to overcook in the crock pot and get mushy because that would just not be good. Okay, so in the crock pot, I'm going to add the macaroni and get it in there. And then I have two and a half cups of whole milk that's going in. We're just adding everything to the crock pot and stir it up and that'll be that. Okay, and then one 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. And then I didn't, the recipe calls for Velveeta. Oh, sorry. She's skipping back over to the seasoning. So one tablespoon of salt. This seems like a lot, but this makes a lot of mac and cheese. So it's not too much, trust me. And then one teaspoon, or actually a half a teaspoon, but I doubled it because we enjoy pepper. But a half a teaspoon of pepper goes in, and then a half a teaspoon of dry mustard powder. That goes in as well. Very good. And then six tablespoons of butter. That goes in also. And then the recipe, okay, now we're going to the cheese. I have white sharp and just sharp cheddar going in. White cheddar, sharp cheese is what I meant to say. And then um, get a spoon in there and get it kind of mixed up. I've never made this before, okay? I mean... I always just do it on the stove top and I really like to make it myself or, you know, the box stuff will do in a pinch. Okay. Uh, the recipe calls for Velveeta, but we don't, I don't cook with Velveeta enough to buy it. So I just went with five slices of American and called it good. I always have that stuff on hand, but I just don't cook with Velveeta enough to buy it and then have it hanging around in my fridge forever. I just didn't want that. Okay, and then one softened block of cream cheese. I just stuck this in the microwave. It was right out of the fridge. I just put it in the microwave for like a minute and it's it was softened enough to put in there. I want to make sure this is done at two hours. I don't want it to take any longer than that. So I just wanted to give it all the help I could. And then the lid goes on for two hours and then during the cook time, you're going to want on high, by the way. I don't know if I said that. On high. Uh, you're going to want to mix it up a couple times during the two hours just to make sure that it all gets nicely cooked evenly. And yeah, that's all you got to do. Just leave it on high for two hours. And it just turned out so good. Look at this. This is almost done at this point. At first, I was like, I don't know if this is going to turn out. But, I mean, the second time I stirred it, it was so creamy. Just look at this. It's so, so, so creamy. I was really surprised. And the pasta is almost there. Almost all done. And it just looks so good. And you'd never know there was a, a block of cream cheese in here. This is just reserved cheddar I'm putting on top to melt before I serve it. But yeah, if you didn't see me make this, you wouldn't know that there's cream cheese in here. 
Like it didn't, that taste just didn't come through really strong. It just made it super creamy because my husband's not a big cream cheese fan and it just, it was great. It was so, so good. I'm going to link it for you. Please make this. This is also be really good for this upcoming summer. Okay, so now for the next recipe, I'm going to make um, cheesy puff pastry wrapped asparagus. I have my recipe over here. But I just have a box of puff pastry, just one, one box, and um, just thaw them out according to the directions on the box. For me, I wanted to just um, thaw them in the microwave. So I just took out one sheet of puff pastry and then I wrapped it in a paper towel like this. And then I just put it in the microwave for 15 seconds until it feels like it's easy enough to um, un unfold like that. And it is. You can feel that it's, it's softer too. So 15 seconds is plenty to thaw out the puff pastry from the freezer. Or you can um, thaw it... Um, you know, there's lots of other ways. Anyway. Okay. So, um, and then also I have a large sheet pan here and then I'm going to unfold this parchment paper and then spray with a little bit of nonstick. I preheated my oven over there to 425 and I'm going to grab a little bit of cheese from the fridge. I think I'm going to use, it doesn't specify what kind of cheese to use. But I think I'll just use Parmesan cheese. I think that'll be nice with the asparagus. And then just a little bit of seasoning. And then you just make little bundles and then put them in the oven for like 15 minutes. And there you go. A quick little slide. So let's get going. So let me, I'll be right back. Okay. It took me a few minutes to um, figure this out, but we got it now. <laughs> okay. So unroll your pastry sheets. Okay, on a lightly floured surface. This is, you know, I've been working a little bit on this, so my, my cutting board is a little bit dirty, but anyway. And then we'll cut these into six equal parts. So we'll go this way. So that gives us three sheets. And then I'll go across the middle and that'll give us six. So, I don't have enough. Anyway. So I'll just go this way this way and then across as evenly as I can. I think that looks about right. Close enough. So I'll just set these ones aside over here until I'm ready to work with them. So on one sheet, I'll brush. I have canola oil, but the recipe says to use olive oil. I would use that instead if I had it, but I don't have olive oil right now. So just a pinch of that. And then I have asparagus spears here. So I'll just put them diagonally like that. Lay them diagonally across. And then I'll sprinkle with a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. And then I have some freshly grated Parmesan cheese here. I'm gonna be generous with the cheese because we like the cheese. So then you just fold the opposite corner over or fold one corner up and over the asparagus. And then you take the opposite corner and just lay it across like that. And then you just kind of pinch it the seams a little bit so it stays together. And that's pretty much all there is to it. And then I'm just gonna put it on my baking sheet with the parchment paper. And, hmm. <sighs> I'm a little short, but anyway, continuing on. Just brush a little canola oil like that. 
a little salt and pepper. I forgot my asparagus. Place them diagonally on the parchment, or on the, the pastry sheet, sorry. And then a bit of pepper. And then some cheese. Just like that. And put one corner over like that. I'm gonna show you. And then you take the opposite corner and fold it up like that ish. <laughs> but anyway, you sh you'll you'll get a little bundle. Ask like that. I'll just place it here on my baking sheet. And as you can see, we're almost ready to go in the oven. I think they look good. They're going to be tasty. I love pet puff pastry and cheese and everything. So I think this is going to be really good. So I just realized I forgot to sprinkle the other ones with um, garlic powder. <laughs> so I just put a little sprinkle on there. Don't forget that when you make yours like me. <laughs> Oopsie. I could also, I could also just Sprinkle them with a little baking powder on top, maybe, because you're going to put a little egg wash. I could do that, too. So it'll be in there. So here they all are. They're all ready to go in the oven. So then I'm going to... Not that. I'm going to brush each of them with some beaten egg. This is just one beaten egg. No, nothing added to it. So I'll just brush the tops of each one. And this will help it get nice and golden in the oven as it bakes. Very important step here. And as I said, I did forget the garlic powder, so I'm just gonna sprinkle just a touch more. I think I'll use garlic salt on the top of each one with a little garlic powder to really drive home that garlic flavor or to you know help it stand out here. But anyway, okay, so I'll just take my, let's, no, let's do my garlic powder. I'm going to remove that. I am looking, here it is. I have my garlic salt here. And then I'll just do a quick, not too much, sprinkle over each. <laughs> and then a little garlic powder there's not much there's this is pretty much gone so there and then a little bit of pepper like that and then this will go into the 425 degree oven for 12 to 15 minutes but I will check it at 12 minutes just to see where it's at okay I just wanted this isn't part of the recipe I just did but I have these um, pastry sheets left over from the asparagus. So I'm just gonna make some cheese straws real quick. And I thought, you know, somebody might like it out there. So um, I just rolled these out just a little bit and then I brushed it with melting but melted butter, each one. And then I'm gonna put a little sprinkle of cheese, I put it, on each one. But I think I'll do just a little sprinkle of salt on each one. And then you do a little sprinkle of Parmesan. You can do whatever kind of cheese you want on these. That would be good too. Any kind of cheese would work. I mean, you know, you don't want goat cheese or anything. I don't know, it might be kind of weird. I'm just going Parmesan and cheddar. You just put a little bit down on each one. Just like this, kind of right down the middle. These would be good for Easter too. I mean, to be honest, it, they would. Um, so then you take each one and just kind of like um, twist it twist each one. These actually might be a little big. 
that you kind of twist it like in opposite directions ish or just twist it until you get kind of a a spiral like that this is kind of what you're looking for right here but yeah Just kind of <coughs> twist it, excuse me, until you get something that resembles a little bit like that. You're supposed to twist it in opposite directions. Just do it however it works. There. Or you could like roll it like this and then just kind of twist it. <clears throat> like that. And this is a good way to use up the extra dough. I didn't want to just throw it away. My camera came right out of the holder. <laughs> I'll probably cut that part out. But anyway, the asparagus bundles are, are baking right now. So then you just brush the top of this with egg wash and sprinkle maybe on a little bit more cheese and then that'll go in the oven too. So the timer just went off on the asparagus bundles and they're almost there. I want them to be a little bit more golden brown, so I'm gonna put them in just for probably another two minutes. And then we'll see how they look. So now I'm sure they're going to be done. Okay, yep. These look just perfect. They look all puffy and golden and wonderful. Just show you down here. Look at those, they look gorgeous. I'm just gonna let them cool down for a minute or two and then I'll give one a try and we'll see what we think. Oh, and in the meantime, I'll turn down the oven to 400 and then bake the cheese straw. Okay, and then to finish off the cheese straws and get them ready to go in the oven, I'll just brush each one with egg here so I'm not wasting as much of this egg left over from the asparagus. And then, then you just kind of sprinkle over a little bit of Parmesan cheese. And then these will go into the oven for, again, like 12 to 15 minutes. These are really good. I've made them before. They're really good. So I'll just sprinkle each one with cheese. Just like that. These are really good also. Okay, in the oven. These have sufficiently cooled enough for me to try now. So, doesn't that look wonderful? I think these will be really cute to have on your Easter table. Excuse my timer. <laughs> um, yeah. Just for an extra little side to go with your meal. Asparagus is good for you, so why not? Mmm. These are good. I love the puff pastry. You can taste the cheese and it's well seasoned with the salt and the pepper and the garlic powder. So yeah, I definitely recommend trying these for Easter maybe. They look great. So yeah, I'll have the recipe linked for you in the and description. Here are the cheese straws just came out of the oven. These are really good. I'll have it the recipe linked for you also. But yeah, these are so good, so cheesy. They're really flaky with the um, puff pastry and 
10 out of 10, recommend, try it. I will have it linked for you. So in this video, I'm making something called bunny bait and it sounded really good to me. So in this big bowl, I'm gonna combine this cereal here and the nuts. These two things will go in the butterscotch chips and the M&Ms will go in separately. And then I'll melt this vanilla um, candy coating and coat the cereal first and then put in the chocolate chips and the butterscotch chips. So let's get going. Cap'n Crunch cereal, did not no berries in it, just the Cap'n Crunch goes in. And then this is Rice Chex cereal, goes in too. And then these, you can use pretzel sticks, but I wanted to, I'm not a big fan of pretzel sticks. My family isn't either. So I just went with some pecan, pecans, pecans. These are just um, finely chopped and I'm gonna put those in too. So let me get my little spatula here. Mix these all together. Okay, and then we have the candy coating here, the vanilla candy coating. The thing that I like best about this brand is it has, it comes in a melting tray already. So you don't have to put it in a separate bowl or anything. You just put it in the microwave as is. So I'm just going to go over here to my microwave and melt it. Yeah, microwave thing included tray. Okay, it says to do it for one minute. And then I do it for one minute. And then I'll stir it up a little bit. And then after that, then you just do it in small increments until it's all melted. So I'm just going to keep doing that and I'll be right back. Alrighty, microwave went off. Let's go in and see. Yeah, it's not quite, it's starting to melt, but we're not quite there yet. So I'll just put it back in the microwave and keep going. I'll do it for 30 more seconds and we'll see where it is. Okay, so um, the candy coating is melted and it's gonna harden quickly. So you have to work quickly. And I thought this would just be kind of a fun thing to try because you know, usually I do Muddy Buddies, which is powdered sugar and cereal and all that stuff. Um, but this is different and I thought it might be kind of fun to do something a little different. So I'm just gonna mix the cereal. So it's all coated in the candy coating. Just like that. Yeah, I think the pretzel sticks would be a good idea too because, you know, it's kind of like bunny, you know, I don't know. It just kind of goes a little better than the pecan, but, you know, we just, we just don't really like pretzel sticks. And we only came in like a two pound bag and I didn't want that hanging around. And anyway, it's a whole thing. Okay, so now that it's all mixed up, then I'm going to add in a 10 ounce bag of Easter M&Ms plus half a cup of butterscotch chips goes in and then I'm just going to fold it in, fold the cheese in. <laughs> anyway, if you know, you know, <laughs> it's just funny. I don't know. Look at it. It's so Easter. It's so fun. It's not really Easter weather here right now. It's pouring here. It's, yeah, not pretty, but anyway. So after it's all mixed together, then I'm going to grab my sheet pen here with parchment paper. And then I'm just going to dump it all onto the sheet pan. 
just like that. And then kind of press it down so it's evenly spread on the on the sheet pan here. And then I'm just going to let this set up and for about 45 minutes. And then you just kind of break it up into chunks and you know, it'd be it's done. And then just to add a little extra pizzazz, we'll just put on some of this pink sprinkles. And then it doesn't say that you need to put it in the fridge to set up. So I'll just let it sit out here on the countertop and I'll be back to show you how it looks like when it's all set. So here is the bunny bait all set. It's been chilling over there for like an hour probably. You can just kind of break off little bite-sized pieces just like that. And then let, you know, if you have little kids at your house, it'd be easy for them to eat. It just breaks apart really easy like that. And it's good. I like it. It's a little different from, you know, the usual money buddies you might make or it's just something a little different to have for everybody. Anyway, it's good. So thanks for watching and I hope you try one or two of these recipes. I like them. I thought they were really good. And I'll see you in the next one, okay? Happy Easter!